So today we're going to talk about the sequence that we follow when we do scan as a part of the hemodynamic assessment in the TNE protocol. Of course, this may be variable and different between centers. However, most of the centers would use this sequence. So we always start with the apical four chamber view, and that's for two reasons. Number one, it gives us quick assessment of the biventricular systolic function, as well as the dimensions of the chambers. This is important, especially if you're assessing hemodynamic significance of the PDA. And the reason number two is that there are a lot of views that we have to do uh, from the apical window. So that's why it's better to get it done first. So after the apical four chamber view, we move to the apical five chamber view, and this is important when assessing the left ventricular cardiac output. Following that, we move to the apical two chamber view, and this is important to assess the ejection fraction by Simpson by Blaine method. Following that, uh, we move to the apical three chamber view, which is another angle where we can see the LVO, as you can see here. Following that, we move to the RV focused view when we focus only of, on the RV and the free wall of the RV. So we're apical, but we, with a little bit of sliding towards the RV where we can see the RV free wall here. And this is very important view when we assess the systolic function of the RV. Following that, we move to the RV three chamber view. And please feel free to watch the video that I posted about this view. Next, we move to the peristernal views, starting with the long axis view here. And then with a little bit of tilting, we check the inflow of the right ventricle and then the outflow of the right ventricle, as you can see here. And then with 90 degrees uh, rotation, we move to the peristernal short axis view here at the base of the heart and then at the mitral valve level, and then at the papillary muscle level, and then all the way to the apex, and then the branch PA comes next. So we're very close to the branch PA view. We move to the ductal view where we assess the PDA. And then since we're very close to the suprasternal window, we move to assess the arch the arch laterality, the crab view, and feel free to watch the video that I posted before about the crab view. And then since we're in the suprasternal window, we get a quick look at the neck vessel in general, which is the neck vessel view. Uh, and this is important to rule out persistent left SVC. As you can see here, the this is the left SVC flow. We next move to the subcostal views. We look at the IVC. We assess the abdominal aorta as well as celiac artery and SMA. And then it's important to look at the MCA and check its flow Doppler pattern as well as the resistive index. And then we move to the atrial septum view to assess the atrial shunt and its hemodynamic significance. SBC flow is next. And then last but not least, we have to assess the central line position. And feel free to watch the video that I posted about how to assess the position of the line using the ultrasound. I hope that was helpful and see you in the next video.